Before we get started with this video, uh, I just wanted to point out that what I'm working with, the pokeberry plant, does have elements about it that are toxic. So if you're gonna go into the wild and pick pokeberries, I would do your research, read, and figure out what parts of the plant are toxic and um, and then proceed. Treat the plant with respect and you shouldn't have any problems. Make sure you use gloves. I would use good quality nitrile gloves and do it in a ventilated area. That said, it is fun to work with. Um, it's something that's been done um, for years. Native Americans used to um, use it uh, for paint for their paintings and their war paint and uh, Civil War, uh, they used it for ink for writing. So it, it the berry is a really useful thing. And uh, this this end of the summer, I saw a pokeberry plant um, at our house um, down along the fence line, and I just picked it today. And so here's here's what we got going. Talk to you. I had an idea about uh, um, making a stain. If anybody knows what this is, they'll know this is a pokeberry plant. And you do not, you do not want to get those smashed on your hands they do stain bad but anyway we're gonna we're gonna pick the rest of these guys I think a lot of them have fallen off no here there's a good one there's a good one oh don't fall don't need a lot of it we're just gonna see but I thought you know why not That's that's good. Look at this. So we're just let me get this in here. We're just kind of smashing away. Come on, focus, would you there? But uh, usually the folk berries spend most of the summertime growing. And then the, the berries in the towards the end of the summer and the fall, they start to they start to ripen like this. <laughs> that looks pretty look at that. So obviously the picture is or the cut uh, the color is going to be purple, a wine wine color. But uh, this kind of reminds me of the the aniline dyes that I've talked about, and this is definitely a non toxic way to get this color. Remember the video that I did about an alternative to Purple Heart? You know that involves denatured alcohol and aniline dyes and whatnot. Water. 
I mean, um, it kind of thins it out a little bit. I think it's going to be pretty neat. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, this is pretty darn cool, I have to say. And it's drying right in. Holy smokes. Hey, not a bad idea. If you want a purple axe handle. Hard for this. I'm not throwing it out. Keep going darker. And since this is water based, basically, linseed oil or um, tongue oil won't have a problem with it. Wow. This is that piece of flame. This is flame hickory too that I had. I think it went a little too skinny. That's why I didn't like it. By the time I got it where I wanted it, it was too skinny. Okay, well this time we're gonna put this on it and we're just gonna let it sit for a while. I like that deep color. Wow. Okay. Off to find a jar and we're letting that dry. So we'll be back. Well, it's been about three hours and it's dry. Let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. So let me grab some uh, linseed oil and we'll uh, I'll be right Nothing's back. coming off on my hand, which is good. Um, so what I have is one part uh, boiled linseed oil and one part um, gum turpentine mixed together. And we'll see what, what we get here. that marinate for a little while. 